Okay, folks, welcome, welcome to our in-service, our knowledge share on Kurzweil 3000. Uh, have you heard a little bit about this before? Nothing. Nothing about it? Okay, yeah, Josie has. Josie, what, what have you heard about it? I saw a demonstration of it at CSUN, I believe it was that one, so. Okay, what did it, what did it do? It was really neat at uh, helping people be able to read with prompts and colors and follow along and all kinds of other educational benefits. Widgets and good, yeah. good things, yeah. yes, exactly. And uh, how many times have you read a paragraph and then went back and, re and accidentally reread the same paragraph? Or skipped a line as you're reading? Have you ever done that kind of thing? Okay, everybody does that kind of thing. So this is truly universal design for learning software. And the reason is because it helps somebody who's dyslexic. It helps somebody with cognitive disabilities. Maybe somebody has low vision, something like that. So it's going to help those students. But it's also going to help English as second language learners because they get to hear the word pronounced to them. They can also look it up and get it translated. I'll show you that in a few moments. Okay. And it helps everybody else. Let's say you're just you know, struggling with keeping on the same line. Uh, your focus is, uh, you're having a hard time with your focus. And also it's reading to you. So you could be cleaning your house or something like that as you uh, uh, listen to this, all right? And there are other utilities that do that as well. The Mac will speak text to you and we can get the, the PC to do that as well. Okay, so I want to show you, I want to have it read for you, and you can see what it looks like. I brought in an article into Kurzweil 3000. This is the standalone version on the Macintosh. There's also a version for the web, or I'm sorry, for the PC, and a version called Firefly for the iPad, okay? And there are slightly different functionalities um, depending on what version you're working with. But I'm going to go ahead and have it read here, and let's take a look. So what this is is a scanned... PDF, it has been um, optical character recognition has been performed on it so it can actually speak the words. So Kurzweil does that. Um, and I, I went ahead and did that ahead of time so it wouldn't take too long. But here it is, here it goes. And I tell you what, I might start it, well, we could start right here. Dram Energy Special Issue $1. Or actually my cursor was down here when it started, okay? So um, it highlights the sentences or passage and then as it speaks the word, uh, it will highlight it in green. Now keep in mind that it's moving pretty fast. Here's how fast it's going right there. And uh, you can also have it read uh, one word at a time and you have to prompt it to go forwards a line at a time. Highlights only, um, different things like that. You can make it self-paced and also change it to different voices uh, and voices in other languages too. So that's kind of nice. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and have it read. Six, volume 13, number one. Contents, March 2003, volume 13, number one. Dram Energy Special Issue DJ. Hopkins Research. Counter text. Performance. One, reconsidering the textual authority of the Dram Energy Mark Bly. Okay, I'm going to stop it just for a moment and point out that uh, while uh, we in the room are pretty darn literate, okay, so it's, a, uh, it's something that is a relatively simple tool. And when you're, when you're highly literate, you can read real fast, you know the names, you know the definitions of the words, um, different things like that. So um, it may appear simple to us as a, uh, a highly literate person, but for the uh, student whose literacy level is not quite where it should be, it definitely is a big help. I like to use the analogy of the dog chuck it, okay? because it's a very simple tool, but it works really, really well. I hope that fellow patented it, or that woman patented it when they made it, because it keeps you from getting your hand all wet, and you can throw the ball real far, okay, when you're using that plastic dog chuck it. It's a very simple tool. But uh, let's see. What's dramaturgy, okay? That's an interesting term. I didn't know what it was until recently. Um, it's really the study of uh, how, to, how to produce a play, uh, especially in my understanding the historical context of the play. So if you're gonna uh, put on a Shakespeare play, you'd wanna know what that historical context was. So you'd know maybe um, that women were supposed to have a dowry when you married them, different things like that in that context, in that time. So what we can do is we can actually just go to any word and click it, double click it, and then right here I can look it up 
And there it is right there. I can have it uh, speak. Noun one, the art of the theater, especially the writing of plays. Adjective one, drown a, churgic. Okay, and uh, let's see. I can look at the syllables. I can have it speak these to me. Dramaturgy, D-R-E, A-X, Tuxer, J-I-Y, dramaturgy. Okay, and I believe what it's doing, and it will pronounce or speak this as well, is it's using something called the International Phonetic Alphabet there to show you how to pronounce words. So when you go into the dictionary and you see this, it's what linguists use to dissect the sound of words across different languages. It's called IPA, the International Phonetic Alphabet. I believe that's it. Um, but let's see, what else? You've got the spelling there. But if I typed, if I clicked on something like cat, It'll actually bring up a picture of a cat, all right, which is pretty neat. You can even look up uh, the uh, picture, and uh, or, or uh, it'll give you a picture. It will also look up a picture if it's a simple picture. It looks in the uh, different dictionaries to do this, the American Heritage, Concise Oxford Dictionary, American Heritage Dictionary, at least for the words, okay? So if you don't see it in one, it may be in the other, all right? So that's really nice. Um, how many times have you had to reach for the dictionary like a good student as you read? Okay, That's what a good student should do when they come across words they don't understand. But this is much easier. Just boom, boom, boom. Just grab it. So that's what dramaturgy is. Now, um, some other things about this that are really nice. Not only does it read to you, and I can make this text bigger, by the way. Maybe a little bit bigger. Um, I can move through these different pages. And again, it will read them to me, but uh, there's also some other features that I can use. Over here, we've got this little toolbar, and I'll use my pen to point out, well, let me bring it a little closer to me. Okay, there we go, that's better. We have this little toolbar right here that lets me do things like highlight within the text, permanently highlight the text, um, to circle text, to put in, um, this is a voice uh, note right in the middle of the text. I can make a voice note. I can also put in like uh, little stickies. I can put in a thought bubble that shows up when you hover over things. So I can highlight this text and use it for studying with notes. But the cool thing is I can highlight the text just what I want and click extract and it kicks out a study guide. It pulls all my highlighted text out into an outline or a study guide. So real quickly I'll show you that and then we'll move on to some other interesting things. Um, let me go down the page here and uh, just say that, let me find something that's kind of interesting. Well, interesting enough, protocols for research. Okay, you decide that this is a very important area right here, at least up until the contribution. So. I'm going to highlight it with uh, yellow, and I believe I actually have to just click the highlighter. I don't need to highlight the text. There we go. All righty, so all the way to uh, production, that's fine. And then, well, there's another concept in here, and it is subordinate to uh, this concept. So this is going to be underneath it, and I definitely want to uh, understand uh, this concept as well. And I tell you what, we're going to try one or two other little things. I'll put in a, uh, oh, maybe a little sticky. And I'll just say, and I'll double click. Very, Very important. important. And it's also speaking to me as a writing aid as I do that. It has writing aid capabilities, which I'll show you in a few moments. And of course, you'd put things that are more pertinent and applicable in these areas. But once I have it annotated, I can come here to uh, file and extract notes and highlighted text. So all of a sudden, it gives me these options and it's telling me what do you want to highlight and how do you want to indent it? In other words, it's going to imply a hierarchy according to the different uh, colors I use. So I went with yellow first and then green for the second one. Uh, let's see how it all looks. I'm going to extract. All right, and there it is right there, okay? And I can save it, I can print it, different things like that. I can format it, but uh, it's a nice way to pull all that out. And I'm, it did optical character recognition on this, and I'm seeing a few little minor errors there too. So, and that may be errors when it speaks. So it's actually working with uh, what it recognized there. So um, maybe uh, 
Well, because it was a scanned document and it was originally an image, we had to run optical character recognition over it, and it's pretty good, but not perfect. So um, just want to point that out. So that's a nice little feature. Questions about anything so far? Yes? Um, if this is reading to somebody who's blind, is there a way for them to highlight things? Um, Actually, this I can't see where right. The are. This is um, not the number one preferred tool if you're fully sight impaired. If you're if you're blind, Jaws is actually because there's a lot of landmarks that will, Jaws will will speak as you go through a website, for instance, a well created website or well created PDF that'll say heading one, and then um, uh, we'll say link. Uh, we'll say student link student disability services. So. Um, there's a lot of navigational aids in JAWS, uh, especially when the document or the website is created correctly. So this likely is not the tool you would use if you were 100% sight impaired or, or fully blind. So, but a good question. Um, other questions? Please, I like questions. Um, when you were having it read right at the beginning, the phrasing seemed very odd. Is there any way to adjust that? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, it's getting better all the time, and the voices, uh, depending on what voice you choose, some are better than others. So the computer, and I had a discussion with somebody about this uh, last night, actually. The computer is reading to folks, and uh, it does a pretty good job. It's not too, too bad, but uh, that human inflection, the knowing, um, Oh, the intonation, the different things like that, when uh, to put emphasis, uh, different things like that, they're really difficult for the computer to do because it doesn't know. It's like if I say, you can say something two different ways. Like, um, you can say, you went to the movies tonight? Or you can say, you went to the movies tonight? You know, so one is more accusatory and one is more questioning, right? So. Um, and uh, many languages have a lot of meaning in that kind of inflection, like Chinese, I know, I, I know has a huge amount of meaning in the, the inflection of words uh, or syllables. So something to know about there. But uh, I really think computers, honestly, are not going to be able to do that for a while. I mean, uh, because uh, there's, there's extra information there that uh, the computer can't pick up from the printed page. For instance, if you ask a musician about printed music, uh, somebody who's an expert musician, it's likely they'll tell you that not all the information is actually on the page. It's something they're learning from the conductor, from their other, uh, other uh, musicians, or through their experience. So play a little bit loud. Well, actually, that can be on the page, but maybe they want you to slow down just a little bit. You know, uh, ch change the rhythm just a little bit. Sometimes that can't be annotated on the page. So it's interesting. So the, the, um, the conversation I had was, would this be good for reading Shakespeare? And believe it or not, it will look up some of the words, some of the, it's early modern English and Shakespeare, it will look up some of those and find the definitions. Uh, looked up prithy the other day, and I can do that, which is, uh, means uh, pardon me or uh, something like that. Um, so it will look that stuff up, but it definitely is not gonna get the dramatic uh, part of that. So that's where something like a Shakespeare play, you watch it. Right. So you've got that supplement. So it's but, but even up at the top, um, it read the title, and then it went down to the author's name, and it said DJ, and then there was kind of a long pause, uh -huh. and then it says the last name, and then jumps right into the um, whatever came next, and it's like, Okay, what did, where, did, where did DJ come into all of this? Because it's not bunched with it, I guess. Right, and let's, I'm going to slow it down a little bit and let's hear it again, right there. Research, counter text, performance, reconsidering the textual a slow. authority of the dramaturg one DJ. Hopkins, we want to see if we can okay. combine with two So what focuses. probably happened there was, um, again, it's, it's not going to be om, omnipotent. It probably hit this period and considered a little pause. Mm -hmm. And that's why, well, DJ, Hopkins, we want to see. <laughs> because it considers it the end of the sentence. Right, pro possibly, yeah. There's that's no my. Between Hopkins and we, there's no 
Exactly, yeah. So, so exactly. He has no way to consider the space. Right. Well, also keep, keep in mind that um, the way you make a document, like we, we spent a lot of time with the faculty on having their syllabus format a specific way so that a screen reader will read it, um, will apply in these areas too, to, at least to some extent. So uh, if I had a floating text box over here and one over there, it may not even read them in the right order. Um, but I do think there are some limitations for sure. Um, so uh, computers are good at things uh, when they can recognize those patterns, but I mean, there's only so much they can recognize and deal with. And it's getting better over time. It's like text, uh, it's like speech recognition. It used to be really bad, now it's quite good. It's getting better, it's not perfect. Um, and OCR is, used to be laughable in the 90s. It's quite good now, uh, not perfect though. Monica. Uh, well, since we were reading a headline and a name and you know, a quote, that might have been a little bit of the puffer section, but maybe you could just uh, show us a couple of sentences in the actual sure. the body copy. Sure, and I'll speed it up a little bit here because that seemed a little slow. Robert Woodruff walked into the studio on the first day of rehearsal and, with no prior contact with anyone in the company, began to introduce himself quietly, one person at a time while we all stood around and somewhat uncomfortably stared at him. When he reached MEA Circumflexi, you were on the third stop on his tour of the room a year introduced so that didn't translate. and he said, Circumflex. Parameter, yeah. Fantastic yep. A Circumflex and with the other yeah. two dozen company members looking on. Now if this was a Word document, it wouldn't have that issue me to do because the Word documents aren't scanned. The the they begin as text characters and there's no variation there. This is the uh, OCR making a misinterpretation. Get everything you can on so well Rock A Circumflex then it doesn't have to read not at once. And exactly. As a matter of fact, why don't we do this real fast? Let me stop this. Let's open up Mark Lamecus' syllabi. And we're in Kurzweil. Let's take a look at that. So, so here we go, and we're going to make it bigger. And let's see. We can also make the text bigger. There is a way to do that. Let's see if I can get that going. Might throw off the layout, but we'll find out. Okay, and then we're going to get to read. Psi 101, Introductory Psychology, San Diego State University Summer Session 2016 Online Course. Instructor, Mark A. Lamacus, PhD. Pretty good. Pronounced Lamacus. Phone, 619-594-1933. Email, mlamacus at mail.sdsu.edu. Online office hours. Ba class time location. Online required text, psychology, ISBN equals 9781464185. Author, Lick, Ho, and Valentine. One, let's you should purchase the textbook package with this I let's, let's, let's go a little lower and uh, let's see. I just want to read this part too. Nice. Both the textbook and class lectures emphasize an empirical approach to a scientific understanding of human behavior across these diverse domains. Most classes will be in a lecture format in order to enable... And let me show you a couple voices here. So that was a pretty good voice, actually. I'll, I'll go ahead and show you Agnes. ...us to cover the wide expanse of material that comprises yeah, not, not the as good. course. Uh, Something else I want to try here and show you. I'm going to highlight empirical, and then I should be able to go and translate it. Let's see what that does. And what are we going to translate to? Well, we'll find out in a second here. Anybody, there is a Spanish speaker in the room. I know there's somebody pretty good at it. So let's see. I'm going to let it detect that language and translate it to Spanish. Let's see how it goes. And that's, that's an interesting word. Let's see if we can do that one. It may not. There may not be a analog to empirical. Ah, there is. So, uh, empirico. Okay. So you're in Georgia, you're working on your homework, it's all in English, you come across a word, the Republic of Georgia, by the way, um, and all of a sudden you don't know what that word is, and so you translate it to, which is interesting um, because they're not using the same fonts, uh, some other type of uh, character system, uh, not Roman. But there it is right there. Anybody, can anybody validate that for me? And it will translate a whole, uh, a whole passage 
uh, into another language also. And um, it uses Google Translate, so I think that when you get away from word by word, you start to run into more issues on grammar and stuff like that when you do use Google Translate. Um, okay, so it's got that neat feature as well. So any questions about any of that before I um, demonstrate uh, its writing capabilities? Any questions about anything at all? C18. So as you write in it, by the way, it's telling you what you're writing. So if we looked up cat, just real for fun, we look it up, and then we go, wow, look at that. And there's the picture for it, <laughs> so, which is kind of an interesting picture, but uh, that's nice. Questions about anything before I jump into the, uh, the authoring capabilities of it? Okay, I tell you what, um, the nice thing about this is it's got other features within it too. So I am a struggling student, I'm not the best writer, my spelling's not great, different things like that. Well, I can come here and say, uh, start writing, and it gives me three different tools. They're actually kind of linked together. A brainstorm tool, an outline tool, and a draft tool. So this is just your draft paper. So. Uh, a brainstorm tool, well, this is like a concept map, so I'm going to go to from template because it's got some prefabricated, but it's a nice little thing. You talk about uh, you're doing a, uh, an essay on your summer vacation or something like that, so you start with one concept and then you move on to other concepts. So let's see, what would be uh, a good one? Cause and effect essays. Uh, let's take a look at that. I'm curious about that. Okay, so there's our little concept map. And you can actually just set up a blank one and make it yourself. But you can click on it and change these things. And these are considered writing aids. Uh, and then we get the outline view, which uh, is another way to uh, do this as an authoring tool. And then you get the draft view, which is actually your paper. Okay. And let me make sure I turn on what's called word prediction. Let's see. Online window. Hi tools. Okay. You want to see that. I believe it's one of these right there. Okay. Good. Widen that up. All right. So here's my little uh, writing aid. Put it over here if it'll let me. No. Okay. Put it over here. Okay. And I'm going to start with hello. <laughs> okay. Caps lock, John. Caps lock. Hello. Well, welcome. So as you type, it makes suggestions. It's word prediction. So. Uh, welcome to. And it speaks it to you. So when you're writing something, do you typically read it back to yourself, especially if you're going to send it out to, you know, 100 people? You probably speak it out loud. I do that, and I catch things when I do that. I'll also have other people look at it, but welcome to drama. Uh, it probably doesn't have turgy in there, so drama. Uh, and as you type, notice it's starting to predict. So it's saying things like, uh, which one do you want to use? You just click the number. and. Um, I'm English as a second language learner. I'm thinking, well, maybe it's this one here. And I drag, click it. Drag. I get to hear it. And then if I decide, oh, that's not that, I just click number drama. eight and drama comes in right there. So um, it's helping me by doing word prediction as I go, and I can choose that stuff also. So um, that's a nice tool. And it will also play it all back to you. So uh, that works well uh, as you, as you uh, author your documents. Okay. Another thing, well, uh, it's not on this computer, but there's a plug-in for the web. So you can surf the web and do the same kind of thing. It's not quite as much stuff. Um, but, uh, and these days, students aren't going to want to necessarily use their computer. They may want to use their iPad. By the way, this tool is touted as being free to all students and staff and uh, faculty here at SDSU. And I'm, I'm, they're just finishing up the paperwork on the contract agreement. So. Uh, for the latest version. So I'll pursue that so you'll know more about this. You can do voice dictation into this also, which is nice. And there are some other tools that do that too. Um, I'm on the wrong screen there. But uh, I'm going to show you the mobile version. The mobile version is called Firefly. And I couldn't get uh, it to go to the projector. I tried different dongles. So I'm going to use the document presenter. And hopefully that'll come up in just a second here. Okay, yeah. And we'll play with the iris and things like that to get it brighter. Okay. 
So this is called Firefly, and it is a, a slightly uh, less feature-filled version, but uh, uh, it is uh, very useful. There we go. Okay, whoops, a little too much. Okay, pretty good there. So the categories, Aristotle, well, there's some pretty dense reading. Um, let's see. And now I'm having it read to me. Let me make sure my volume is turned up. Okay, I'm going to have to read uh, the first part of Emma. Emma by Jane Austen. So it's a little quiet, because, but there it is right there, and I decide. Uh, Clever and rich, with a comfortable home and happy disposition. Scene two. You like some of the best blessings okay. of existence. Let's see. Vex, there's an interesting word. Let's see if it can look that one up. So I'm going to double click it. Or hold on it. There we go. So I can translate it, I can highlight it, I can make, I believe I can make a study guide from this, but I want to define it. Okay. To irritate, bother, or frustrate, vexing, vexes, uh, origin, uh, Middle English. Um, so lots of good stuff there as well as you read. The one thing about this uh, Firefly is I believe the instructor actually has to load the text into a special blessed folder up on our servers before they can actually get to it. So it's, um, I don't like that feature, but uh, uh, maybe that'll change in the future. Any questions about anything at all? Okay, I'm gonna leave you with one more quick thing and then we will call it a day. This is the research, so um, this is just some of it. Whoops, let me, let me toggle back over here to the laptop. This is just some of it, but I want to point out that there is empirical evidence that this helps uh, students from all different backgrounds. So uh, let me get that out of the way here. So this is from uh, the Journal of Special Education. Um, they're doing things like quasi-experimental research studies, um, no control groups, and then there are experimental research studies. I believe they involve having control groups. They're considered more valid because of that. But um, anyways, there's a fair amount of research that uh, says that this increases the literacy levels of students who use it, believe it or not. So questions about anything at all? Okay, I appreciate your time today, and I thank you for coming, and may the force be with you. Thank you. <laughs>